everybody out there. This is Dick from the Prime XPT Trading Academy with a new episode of That Crypto Show. On today's show, I want to talk about a very, I think, sensitive topic out there and probably a topic a lot of people that, you know, try to make a living by selling signals, by selling indicators, by maybe living off day trading and so on and so forth, are not so willing to talk about. I want to talk about the... Uh, about the limitations of technical analysis and why I think in the situation that we are currently seeing the markets, uh, why it's more important to look at fundamental facts than looking at charts. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how all those, you know, turning wheels, uh, cock wheels uh, in the world are moving together, influencing each other on the financial markets so you will gain a more broader understanding of what actually is going on and why the markets, and I'm not only talking about the cryptocurrency markets here, are moving in this wild way that they are doing at the moment. So, of course, uh, if you have been watching the news this morning, you might be aware that we have quite a situation at the moment in the world. Uh, actually, in my opinion, a situation, uh, and I'm not only thinking about uh, what is going on there in the Ukraine and the tensions between the Ukraine and Russia, I'm also talking here about uh, this looming threat of inflation and of rate hikes uh, that come with normally inflation uh, that the Federal Reserve Bank or the central banks of the world are going to do. And for you to understand, uh, there's a basic principle how the financial markets work and how institutional investors who are responsible for the majority of uh, everyday trading action that you are seeing on the market think. Uh, so you can either be in a risk on scenario or risk off scenario. And I talked, I think, quite extensively about this actually on last week's webinar. Uh, where we are talking about so-called hot charts. And if you have missed that, you might want to click the link above there later on and, and re-watch that. So there's a lot of uh, more in-depth uh, information out there on this risk on and risk off metric. A risk on situation means that market participants are looking for risk and or they are accepting more risk in return to uh, gain a higher revenue. So the perfect example for investors seeking out risk, a risk on situation is that you will see, for example, the stock markets rise, that you will also see cryptocurrency rise because they are perceived by institutional investors as a risky asset. Yeah, I know, you know, we crypto heads don't always like to hear that because we think it's an inflation hedge. But the truth at the moment is at least short and midterm, they are still perceived as a risky asset. So whenever there's a risk on situation, when market participants are looking for risk in return for higher returns for more revenue, you will see the stock market rise, you will see normally uh, cryptocurrencies rising, you will see maybe a weaker US dollar, you will see precious metals falling, so gold will go down, and you will see uh, also a less demand for treasury bonds, for example. Now, on the opposite of this, uh, there's a risk off situation. Risk off means uh, that uh, in investors are looking for so-called safe haven investments. And the typical safe haven investments are out there. They are looking for gold. They are selling stocks. They are selling cryptocurrencies. Uh, they are buying bonds, uh, treasury bonds of of countries and of corporations uh, that uh, have a, are in a very, very good and stable fin financial situation. Uh, you will usually also see the US dollar getting stronger. And uh, one quick look at a couple of assets can help us as investors to determine in what kind of situation we are at the moment. So what we see here, and let's start here with gold. Uh, so this is a chart for the last six months of gold. You can very, very clearly see an uptrend, especially the last days uh, gold moved over 1,900 US dollars which is a very, very clear indication. I mean, look at this uh, development here. Since uh, actually the end of January, we went from 1,780 something to 1,900 US dollars per ounce. 
uh, this is a very clear indication that there is demand for gold, probably because there is a risk off scenario. If we look at the euro dollar, uh, has been moving sideways lately. But if you look where we were six months ago, we were on our way to 120. Now we're at 113. We actually dipped uh, in the end of January all the way down to uh, under 112 already. This means there's demand for US dollar. And uh, so uh, you, the way you have to see it is if you see this quotation euro against US dollar is how many US dollar do you pay for one euro? So the lower the number is, the less US dollar you pay for one euro, meaning the stronger the US dollar is. And if we compare that to where we were six months ago, I think we can very clearly say here, yes, the US dollar has gotten stronger. You will see the same pattern, by the way, uh, on other crypto and on other currency pairs as well. Let's look at commodities. Let's look at oil. And you see here, especially today, Oil is really on on its way there to 100. And yeah, I mean, I personally have to cry uh, almost every time I need to get some gas for my car because it's, it's gotten so crazy expensive. And especially if you see the development since beginning of December, where we are still uh, in areas of 65 US dollars, uh, we have risen here by more than 50% now already uh, and approaching 100 US dollars per barrel. Also typical risk off scenario. Uh, that oil gets more expensive. If we look uh, the last six months at the US stock market, so this is the S&P 500, largest and most important stock index in the world, the 500 largest US companies by uh, market capitalization that are openly traded. And we saw it peak uh, end of December here at 4,800 points. We actually slumped down until uh, almost end of January to, to 4,300 points, had a little bit of a, of, a, of a rally then again. But now, since, uh, since the beginning of February almost, we see declining again. And remember, remember lower stock prices, less demand for, for stocks means a risk off scenario. And last but not least, also, especially if we look at, at Bitcoin and you can see the pattern here really is very, very, uh, very, very alike to what we have seen here in the S&P 500, right? Uh, but Bitcoin tends to outperform to both sides the stock market. So the decline we are currently seeing here in the last days is by far stronger. I mean, we slumped all the way down after we failed to break over the 46,000 here from 45,000 to today 37,000. We were lower in the early session at almost 36,000 US dollars already. So this is a clear indication that we are in a risk off scenario and we are in a risk off scenario because of uh, especially the scenario of the tensions that seem to escalate a little bit there uh, in the Ukraine because be, between the Ukraine and Russia and of course a uh, maybe impending war and maybe even an escalation of a war is something that the markets do not like to see. And this is a typical situation where it does not really help you to analyze the charts. So to analyze the Bollinger Bands here, to analyze uh, what you know what I like to do the the on-chain metrics and the fundamentals uh, that, that tell you like, hey, for example, there are coins moving off exchanges as crazy. So there's a supply shock uh, coming. And I also did a video on this. Um, they don't matter. If the fear is ruling the market, things tend to uh, go crazy and no technical analysis is going to help you there. So what you can do is actually two things at the moment, in my opinion. I'm going to keep liquidity. And I'm going to wait until uh, I get a clearer picture of what might be going on there on, first of all, a political level. Um, and uh, if maybe the tensions we are seeing there between Ukraine and Russia uh, get a little bit lower. Or you might want to come up with a playbook. You might want to, to say, okay, Probably is just a matter of time until things are going to soothe down. And I want to use, for example, prices like this to position myself in the market. Uh, maybe you expect it without all this tension going on and without this 
impending war maybe uh, looming over uh, uh, our heads here. Maybe we should have seen Bitcoin already at 50,000. So you might think, okay, maybe I'm going to use these prices here at the moment to slowly scale myself into the market. So no need to throw everything you have at once into the market. You can really, really work very well here with limit orders, in my opinion, where, for example, you say, okay, if we fall down to the last low here at 33,000 US dollars, I'm going to place a limit order. I'm going to place one at 30, maybe one at 25, maybe one at 20, and so on and so forth. So this is a very, in my opinion, good approach to, to make sure that you scale into the market slowly again, but you are still giving prices in the market a little bit of a chance to, you know, overreact because nobody knows what will the next days bring on the political level. Uh, and, and nobody knows when those actually very, very good fundamentals that we are seeing, for example, for cryptocurrencies are going to kick in and take over the media narrative, narrative we are uh, seeing there out there being very anti-cryptocurrencies. Uh, do, whatever you uh, decide to do is at the moment, at least midterm to long term in your positioning, do not rely too much on charting at the moment. Uh, try to rely more on what your brain, what your common sense tells you at the moment. So as always, and in these times, especially if you are day trading, uh, it's really, really uh, highly, highly recommended by myself to you that you really use stop losses. Better lose on uh, a small amount on a position than being caught off guard uh, when the market really goes wildly against you. And this is a possibility at the moment. We are going to see each other very soon again. Until then, stay safe and bye bye.